Thomas in Georgia. Thank you so much, Phil, for being here today. I of will course, catch up with you a little later. Oh, of course. All right, you take care. Go do good things. <laughs> Thomas, thanks for waiting. You're on the Atheist Experience with me. Hello, Matt. Uh, can you hear me fine? Is there an echo? There's not an echo. I mean, it's a little hollow sounding, but I think I can understand you. What's up? Okay, uh, I'm not sure if you remember, but I called about three weeks ago when you and Don were hosting. Yeah. I don't remember okay, the details, so but your voice sounds familiar. Okay. Uh, just letting you know, I had never called into a show before. Yours was the first. Oh, awesome. And this will be my second time calling. Well, we're happy to have you call back. What's up? Okay, so in our last discussion, we had established that, first of all, what we find uh, is true is most likely true. Um, not 100% sure about anything. Uh, would you still agree with that? Um, sure, yeah. I see no path to absolute certainty, so it's all about probability and likelihood. And, yeah, I think we're on the same page there. Okay. Um, so, also... By reasonable deduction, I mean uh, an argument whose premises are claimed to provide conclusive evidence for the truth of its conclusion, uh, not any sort of evidence, but conclusive evidence. So just because we don't have uh, evidence or a certain type of evidence does not make a claim untrue as long as we have conclusive evidence. Conclusive evidence being evidence that is not contradicted by other evidence. Would you agree? So, so it kind of sounds like you're reading this, and and it's a little bit confusing um, because okay. because you're simultaneously talking about a reasonable argument having evidence that's conclusive, which for me all that means is that there's sufficient evidence to warrant a conclusion, nothing to do with certainty, but I've reached a conclusion. But the absence of such evidence, I, I would agree with you that the absence of such evidence doesn't mean that the claim is false. However, that's irrelevant because the burden of proof is on the claim itself. And by the way, I'm now joined by Stephen, Rationality Rule, who's back again. Uh, so he might chime in on this, but continue. Okay, well, um, I have conclusive evidence that the universe that we know is deterministic. And I doubt you can find evidence that contradicts that claim. Okay, okay well, so, so, so we're, we're starting off really, really badly. Because, uh, first of all, what, if there is a deterministic universe, I don't, I don't know how that gets us to a god, but the universe is, in fact, largely deterministic. Um, I think most people who would view this would opt for the soft deterministic universe because of things like quantum indeterminacy seems to demonstrate that it's not, it's not hard deterministic. But... To some extent, the universe is deterministic at a minimum. I, not only would I not go trying to argue against that other than, you know, something like quantum indeterminacy, I don't know what it's relevant to. Well, I will go back and refer to where I was talking about Isaac Newton's third law of motion. Uh, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Sure, that's, a, dis kind of that's a descriptive law of physics. Not prescriptive, okay. but okay. To be most likely true. Okay, in our last conversation, Don told me that the quantum world is more about probability and less like bowling balls and pins. Basically, that Newton's law of motion does not apply to the quantum world. Therefore, it is not likely that our universe is deterministic. And that's where I've done more research, and I must disagree with that claim that the universe is not deterministic. Um, there are exceptions, but most evolutions in quantum mechanics is free evolution, meaning it is fully reversible and deterministic. You know, a wave function maps to another specific wave function. The only uncertainty comes from non-unitary measurement evolution. Uh, that's the type that you know, the entangled and superimposed states of particles under certain conditions, uh, like the double slit experiment, experiment. So basically, if we were going to do a double slit experiment today, let's say at exactly 5 p.m. your time, and we were to release one photon, and that photon just happened to travel through a slit on the left, there would have been no way for us to know that it would have traveled through the left slit. Therefore, 
we would not have been able to determine that. Right. For any, for any, the double slit experiment for any individual photon, you can't predict which one's going to go through. But once you pass many through, you have a probabilistic um, uh, distribution where it's 50 50. Okay. So now let's say we rewinded time back to exactly 4 59 or 5 p.m. Except and we can't do that. Again, okay, we cannot do that. Okay. Uh, but let's say we release that exact same photon. There is no reason to believe that that photon will go through a different a different split. Although we are not able to determine, uh, that does not mean okay. it has not already been determined. Okay. So what I'm getting at what okay. So I don't think either one of us are going to disagree with that. The specific phrasing is that there's no reason to think it would have gone through another slit. Correct. That's something that would need to be demonstrated. But there's also no reason to think that it, there's also no reason to think that it might not have gone through the other slip. That's what quantum indeterminacy is telling us that you cannot predict that. And since we can't rewind time to do the experiment, we it's not something we can test. But setting all that aside, what point are we getting to? Well, I'm, I'm trying to get to the point that if you rewind it, these were your words. If you rewind it, the Big Bang and did everything all over again. I would say that everything would happen exactly the same way. You, you would say that or I would say that? No, I would say that. Okay, so would Stephen. Would you agree with that? I, Stephen would agree. I, I would say that I'm convinced oh, by that. your mic. There we go. Here we go. Hello. <laughs> I, would, I would say that I'm, I'm convinced of that, but not to a, a very high degree. It's just from what I've seen and what I know, I would say that that seems to be the case. That is great. So that is likely it is very likely that if we rewind it time and replayed it everything would happen the exact same way yeah i'm not necessarily convinced yeah. of that i agree that it's a possibility it may even be likely but the fact that steven and you are convinced of it has no bearing on whether or not you should be convinced of it mm -hmm. it's not an experiment we can actually do but for the sake of argument steven will grant you that that is the case and i will not grant you that as a case and we'll see where we get <laughs> Well, I mean, Matt, it's, it's not likely that, like, why would anything else other than what has happened happen? I don't know. We if have no reason to believe. Okay, but no reason to believe X does not mean that you have reason to believe not X. We do have a reason to believe it would happen in the same way because it has happened this way. Well, only uh, well, the fact that it has happened one way doesn't, you know, that, that, that's now a, a circular argument. You're essentially saying the reason we believe it would happen this way if we rewound it is because it's already happened this way. But what if you, re re what if you rewound it 100 times and just one of those times it happened a different way? Well, then that, that would mean that the conditions were different. I'm saying under the exact... Conditions, conditions can't be different. That's, what, that's the point. What I'm getting a little confused off here, and it was uh, I should have it would have been nice to have joined the beginning just to definitely get everything in, but I think I'm up to date now. Um, with the universe being deterministic, uh, it seems to be that's the proposition you're putting forward. And as Matt said, I I, I will run with that. Um, are you somehow saying that there must be purpose behind it because it's deterministic? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to follow what you're trying to say. I don't think we've gotten that far. So let's go ahead and get that far. Sorry, go ahead, Thomas. Okay, so if if you were to agree that everything uh, that has happened would happen again if you rewinded time and played it forward, which I see no reason why it would not happen. That's not an argument for way. something. I'm going to have to say that every time. Okay, well, according to Newton's law, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. That's a descriptive law, which isn't prescriptive, and may, certainly Newton's laws break down prior to the point yeah. time, so we can't say that they, they would apply at the instant of the expansion of the universe. Uh, yeah, and to add to that, I would say that while I, while I, while I do agree with you, um, that the universe is probably deterministic, you can't get there with Newton's law for precisely the reason that Matt just said. We the, know the, 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 other reason, the other reason this is, is that if... Newton's law applies at the time of the expansion, then that must mean there's also a negative universe expanding in a different space. Even, even if uh, Newton's law did not apply during the very, very beginning that the Big Bang took place, if the conditions were the same, if the singularity that existed before this universe was the exact same, and exploded in the exact same way, 
why would there be reason to believe that there would be a different outcome? I, so the, I'm not saying there's reason to believe there'd be a different outcome. I, I've already acknowledged that this is, this is the thing. You, you keep constructing these arguments where you want to smuggle in. If you don't have good reason to think something could have happened differently, then there's good reason to think that it would happen the same. Yeah. And, and it yeah, may yeah, be... I think- it may be the case. It may be the case that we just don't know. But I'd like us to get to how this is relevant for as evidence for God. Yeah, this is yeah. Okay. Well, if one of you would agree that if we rewinded time, already done, and redid, okay. Well, that would mean that at the time of the Big Bang, everything had already been decided. No, not no, decided. No, not decided. Not decided. Determined. That's very different. Everything, if I if okay, I pick up if I pick up a die and drop it onto the table, from the instant I let go of it, that die roll is determined by everything that's okay. happening in the universe that can potentially impact it. And so, if we're going to go down this road, then if we reround to the moment where I released it again, we would expect reasonably that the same thing would occur, unless there's some quantum indeterminacy that can affect it. But determined does not mean decided. And by using the word decided, you are smuggling in a thinking agent who's making a decision. Okay. Mechanical processes, okay. mechanical processes without thought behind them, can and are, can and are deterministic, can be and are deterministic. There we go. Okay, I agree. So Okay, so how does it get us to a God okay. then if you just agree that no thinking person decides or that's, has to decide? That's not what I agreed to. What I agreed to. Okay. Well, what, well then, we, then we need to clarify what you agreed to. Okay, uh, you said mechanical. We got there mechanically. Uh, so what I'm, what I'm proposition, my proposition to you is, if, if the Big Bang <clears throat> and all the events, reactions and actions that follow the Big Bang, if they led us to today, me and you, what, and even what we're gonna do tomorrow, that would mean that what we're gonna do tomorrow and the next day has already been determined. Correct. But determined so, does not mean, as you just agreed, that there's an agent who decided because mechanical processes are determined. And all of the evidence that we have that we can investigate describes a mechanical universe, not a universe governed by a thinking agent. So you do agree that from the moment the Big Bang happened, everything was mechanically determined. I think Matt's granting that tentatively. I tend to agree with you. As far as I'm convinced, that seems to be the case. But, but Matt's no. point is that you can't attribute agency to the deterministic uh, mechanisms that we're seeing. Yeah, even if I were to agree, for the sake of argument, with you and Stephen, that from the instant of the expansion, everything that would follow was determined... And I'll just say, f- for the sake for the sake of this call, I'll just go ahead and agree that that is the the case that I'm accepting for now. It still does not point to an agent, because determinism doesn't require an agent. As a matter of fact, determinism may be the antithesis of something that an agent could do uh, in any other step other than being the initial start. Like me choosing when I drop the die, that may be an agent uh, making a decision that could affect the role, but the process of the die rolling is entirely mechanical. It's not like halfway through the roll, I decide that I'm going to get a four. Yeah. And if you want to make that abstraction a little further, you can say you put a dice on top of um, a stone and you just wait for wind to push it off. There's no decision there to make what that dice is going to land on. But if you reproduce those exact um, parameters, it's going to land as it landed again. So, so really the question here is, how are you getting to agency? Okay, so I agree that your example with the die, that's not that fascinating. But if you agree that since the beginning, I mean, from the Big Bang, everything was determined from that moment, is it likely that consciousness was determined from that moment? It's definitional. It's, if, okay. if, if you agree that from the, from the instant of the expansion, everything was determined, then yes, consciousness was determined. That's, but, you know, you, you say the dice example isn't all that fascinating. Well, 
It could be, or, 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 or it, hang on, it could be that it's not that fascinating. Uh, I didn't bring it up because I found it fascinating. I brought it up because it seemed a fairly simple example. But it might just be that you're not looking at it far enough because let's say a uh, hundred years ago, somebody set a die on top of a stone and at some point the wind blew it off and no decision was made and that die rolled down and it landed on a number and somebody found and saw that number and that impacted decisions they were going to make in their life, which then impacted decisions that were made in other people's life. And that ultimately led to whether or not somebody had a religious notion that prevented us from going into space travel earlier and that changed when human beings or that decided, it determined when human beings would then go beyond our solar system, etc. So even something as small as that die roll is still part of a broader causal chain and network. So the fact that you don't think the die roll is particularly yeah, I, fascinating. I'm sorry, Matt. Is, I, I didn't mean to downplay. I didn't mean to downplay the. Uh, it was a great example. It, it is uh, functionally I, identical to the Big Bang. Because as soon as you're talking about a deterministic universe, it doesn't matter where in the universe you start or which item you pick. It is deterministic, and the consequences of it continue to spread out for eternity. Okay, and you do agree that consciousness, okay, let me ask you a question. Did, do you believe that consciousness existed at the beginning of the Big Bang? No. Absolutely no reason to think uh, that. Okay, so, so, you, so you believe that it was determined that consciousness would exist In the, at it, some time. Yeah, but, but yes, Although but, but you're just you're just thing. picking something that you find personal value in because if the universe is deterministic, then sure, it, 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 you and I having consciousness was determined, but so was babies dying from cancer at the age of one. So was uh, so so was all of the plagues, etc. Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying that it's it's you're just. It's, I, I don't think the Earth existed at the time of the Big Bang, mm -hmm. and yet it exists now. So I don't know how it's remotely relevant to talk about whether or not something existed at the instant of the Big Bang, and then it exists now. Yes, we've already agreed. This is determined. It's quite interesting, because you said that the example with the dice is uninteresting. <laughs> and, and I was thinking, I find I, I, any I example it. uninteresting. If the, if the universe is deterministic, it's deterministic. There's not much interest to be able to so, ascertain from that. So I think that consciousness is uh, extremely complex and complicated, so I would find more interest that consciousness can okay. arise. But, but the complexity of something, the complexity of something or the interestingness of it to you is irrelevant. How are you getting to there must have been a God? Do you mm -hmm. think there was consciousness at the moment of the Big Bang? Okay. Um, do, you, all, do you think there were, do you think that consciousness existed at the moment of the Big Bang? In our universe, no. Well, okay. Do, do you know of some other place that consciousness could exist? <laughs> I don't, I am unaware of another place other than our universe. Do you have any way to demonstrate consciousness in any other place than our universe? Okay, that's interesting that you say that. It is. Because although I am unaware, I am unaware of anything other than our universe, I could ask you a question that we've already went over. Can nothing exist? And practically... And, and my answer is no. So therefore, but here's the thing: you're calling in, you're calling in to to essentially claim that there's a consciousness behind the origin of the universe. And then when I ask you if there's consciousness at the origin of the universe, you you can't you, you you haven't claimed it yet. What the hell happened last time you were on the show? Yes, last time I may have stepped into that hole too fast, but okay, we could just okay. Uh, I, I just wanted to to um. So, so let me let me summarize, and then we'll give you one more shot at it before we move on. And that is, Stephen's in agreement with you. The human universe is deterministic, and if there was a possibility of rewinding the clock, everything would have happened exactly the same. And I'm willing to accept that for the sake of this argument. And we both want to know why it is that you're using this as a means of arguing for a conscious decider at the origin of the universe. Um, can you repeat that one more time? Sure. The universe is deterministic for the sake of this argument. Now, why do you assert a conscious agent at the origin? Okay. Um, first, I just, I just, I just want to know if you think that consciousness can exist or form from non-conscious matter. Yes. Is that okay? I think so consciousness. I think it's best described as an emergent property of matter in motion. 
just as wetness is an emergent property of water molecules interacting. No individual water molecule is wet. Uh, how many water molecules do you have to have before you have wetness? I don't really know. It would seem to be enough for you to actually touch it because wetness is a determination based on our senses and feel, which aren't going to operate at a molecular level. Uh, there are plenty of property examples that emerge from things. I think consciousness is essentially an illusion emerging from neurons firing in our head and trying to understand and interpret the world. Okay, so that's one option. I believe there are at least two options that could be the case. Okay. Uh, consciousness could be a property of matter and created from matter, or matter and consciousness could both be born from something beyond matter and consciousness. Sure. How do you demonstrate that? Mm -hmm. And that is where, that's where I, that's pretty much it. I cannot demonstrate either or, either okay. one. I don't think you can either. Okay. Um, Whether or not we can is irrelevant. You seem to think that consciousness originates from something other than matter because your whole point in calling was to argue for a God who created this thing. And all we're saying is we're not convinced. Neither of us are saying, oh, there's no way consciousness couldn't come from a God. But what we do know from studying the brain is that the soul is the single most dead concept in all of theology. That when we observe what happens with brain damaged patients and other things where, you know, you get a hemispherectomy splitting the corpus callosum and then you get two of these. I don't need to go through all these examples, but the thing that we describe as consciousness, there's no reason to think that it's magical. And so when we're talking about investigating something in a reasonable fashion... You don't get to posit an explanation for something that you have no way of testing or demonstrating. So it, you say there are two options, uh, but included in your second option is that consciousness is the product of cow farts and consciousness is the product of magical pixies who come in and tinker with neurons in my brain or consciousness, any of those things that are unfalsifiable and appealing to something beyond matter. That's, they're all interesting, but if we have no way of telling which one of them might be correct, then you can never be warranted in your belief that you've come across the right answer. Okay, yes. I guess that I have to concede once again. Uh, that's pretty much my only point that I had. Okay. But uh, I can I can see where, where I must concede. Uh, Thank you for having me on the show again, Matt. Yeah, thank you. I thank you for calling that. and having an honest conversation because yeah. that doesn't always happen. Yeah, and if you, you come up with something better, by all means, call back. And actually, what you'll find when you listen back to this is that I use the word illusion to talk about consciousness. And I think if you look into that, you'll find a line of argumentation that says in order for there to be illusion, there must be something that is being deceived. And that might be an interesting thing if you look into because it'll spawn a second conversation about how I might, in fact, be wrong. How okay, refreshing. But. Yeah, anyway, thanks for the call, Thomas.